second largest facial bone is the maxilla. Now I will discuss the maxilla. This is the bone of the upper jaw and it is an example of pneumatic bone. Pneumatic bone means uh, these bones like the other pneumatic bones also contains air filled space. This is air filled space called maxillary air sinus. So it is an example of a pneumatic bone. If you are asked can you uh, give some examples of other pneumatic bones? Yes, one is a frontal bone having frontal air sinus, ethmoidal bone having ethmoidal air sinus, sphenoid bone having sphenoidal air sinus. But the largest air sinus it is in the maxilla called maxillary air sinus. Then what is the importance of this air sinus of all these pneumatic bones? It lightens the bone, it is very light in weight. Number one, number two, these sinuses they add resonance to the voice. So it acts as a regenerating chamber. And thirdly, they add some temperature and humidity to the inspired air. So it acts as an air conditioning chamber. What are the parts of this bone? Main parts of the bone, the body, which is piramidal in shape. This is the body. And there are four processes. So frontal, zygomatic, alveolar, and palatine. This is body. It is having four surfaces. This is anterior surface. This is a posterior surface. Also called infratemporal surface. Superior surface or orbital surface. Because it forms the floor of the orbit. And medial surface or nasal surface. Because this forms the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So there are four surfaces. And the air sinus or maxillary air sinus, it is inside the body. Its dimensions are vertically 3.5 centimeter. Then transversely, it is about 2.5 centimeter. And anterior posteriorly, 3.25 centimeter. And it is the largest of all paranasal air sinuses. First of all, let us discuss the anterior surface. This is anterior surface. What you can see in the anterior surface? In the anterior surface here, you can see one prominence here. This prominence is called canine eminence. And which lies deep to this canine eminence? It overlies the socket of the canine teeth. This is canine, this is central incisor, lateral incisor, canine. So, the socket of the uh, canine teeth just lies deep to this canine eminence. And one fossa just medial to the eminence and one fossa or deep test area lateral to the eminence. The medial one is called the incisive fossa and lateral one is called the canine fossa. If I show you the skull here, this is orbit. So this surface of the orbit is the orbital surface of the maxilla. This is maxilla. So, this one means in this bone, this one, this surface. So, anterior, if I show the anterior side here, and if you compare this in this way, here you can see one foramen below the infraorbital margin, this foramen. Here, this foramen is there. This foramen is called infraorbital foramen. Which structure passes? through this infraorbital foramen. It is a infraorbital vessels and nerve. You know the supraorbital foramen here in the frontal bone, the structures passing through this supraorbital vessels and nerve. But here in the infraorbital foramen, in the maxilla, infraorbital vessels and infraorbital nerve. This is one deep notch. This notch, it separates the anterior surface from the medial surface or nasal surface. The next question is what is anterior nasal spine? You can see the projection here. The lower end of this notch here, it meets with the similar notch of the other side and project forward forming a spine called the anterior nasal spine. This is the maxilla of left side, this is the right side. So, if it articulates here, it forms this spine, this one, this projection. 
it is called anterior nasal spine if you are asked what is posterior nasal spine this is posterior nasal spine this is palatine bone original process and meets here forming posterior nasal spine so anterior nasal spine it is formed by the maxilla and posterior nasal spine it is formed by the original process of palatine bone then come to the medial surface that means nasal surface here here is the opening for maxillary sinus which is called maxillary hiatus the question is in an articulated skull or in a living person whether this hiatus it is open or it is closed this opening is closed in an articulated skull but how by the different bones some bones coming from anterior side posterior side above downwards and below upwards what are these four bones mainly which closes this maxillary hiatus in an articulated skull number 1 from the front descending process of lacrimal bone from behind perpendicular plate of palatine bone from above anterior process of ethmoid and from below is the ethmoidal process of inferior nasal concha and all these things they are covered by the nasal mucous membrane but still it remains a small foramen which is called the ostium so in an articulated skull through this ostium the maxillary sinus it opens into the middle meters of the nose and this ostium it is close to the roof of the sinus not at the floor for this reason there is a disadvantage for the drainage of the maxillary sinus so the drainage of the maxillary sinus is dependent on mucociliary escalator which normally beats towards the ostium then drainage becomes easier and secretion from the maxillary sinus it passes into the middle meters of the nose and here you can see one groove is here this groove is called the greater palatine groove and this groove is converted into a canal when it articulates with a similar groove on the perpendicular plate of palatine bone and that canal is called the greater palatine canal and through this canal the structures passing is a greater and lesser palatine vessels and nerve this is posterior surface this posterior surface in an articulated skull here this is the maxilla this is anterior surface this is posterior surface and this is lateral pterygoid plate this is the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla here is the pterygoid plate in this way this posterior surface divided into two parts this lateral part here it forms this lateral part it forms the infratemporal fossa this is infratemporal fossa but if i go through this fissure this is called pterygo maxillary fissure we will reach the pterygo palatine fossa so the posterior surface it forms also the anterior boundary of pterygo palatine fossa so the pterygo palatine fossa medially and infratemporal fossa laterally in between is the pterygo maxillary fissure you see this articulated skull this is pterygoid plate of the sphenoid so this is pterygo maxillary fissure between the anterior surface and posterior surface there is a thick ridge of bone this one and this ridge thick ridge it acts as a line of buttress for transmitting the force during mastication it is its importance and on this surface you can see some small one or more foramen through which the structures passing are the posterior superior alveolar vessels and nerve and you can see also one oblique group this is the oblique group this one this is going upwards and laterally and this group contains the maxillary nerve but when this group reaches here on the superior surface it passes through the inferior orbital fissure 
and the nerve now the inferior orbital nerve and here you will see this one tuberosity or rounded elevation called maxillary tuberosity. This tuberosity it articulates with the pyramidal process of palatine bone. Now come to the superior surface or orbital surface. The orbital surface it forms the floor of the orbit. This is the orbit and this is the floor. So this part of the maxilla forms the floor of the orbit. If you are asked what are the other bones forming the floor of the orbit, one is this maxilla that means the orbital surface of the body of the maxilla. Next bone is the orbital surface of gigametric bone, this is gigametric bone. So its orbital surface is this one and thirdly the orbital process of palatine bone from this side. Then one thing you can see, I told you already this group continued upwards here. So on the posterior border of this orbital surface having one group, this group is continued as the infraorbital canal here and this infraorbital canal it transmits the infraorbital vessels and nerve and if you continue this group anteriorly it comes out. So this group continued forward as a infraorbital canal and on the anterior surface it opens here in the infraorbital foramen as infraorbital nerve. And another important term sometimes asked called what is canalis sinusus. This small lateral branch of the infraorbital canal from here it goes laterally then forward and running forward in front of the maxillary sinus and passes anteriorly below the infraorbital foramen. Then margin of the anterior nasal aperture then opens near the nasal septum in front of the incisive canal comes here. The so what structure passes through this canal sinuses? The anterior superior alveolar vessels and nerve. So among the four process, the longest one is the frontal process. This frontal process having one anterior border, then posterior border, medial surface and lateral surface. Then what is the articulation of this upper end? This is frontal process. It is its tip. The tip or upper end it articulates with the nasal notch of the frontal bone and its anterior border it articulates with the posterior border of the nasal bone. This is nasal bone and its posterior border it articulates with the anterior border of the lacrimal bone. This is lacrimal bone and here on the lateral surface, this is lateral surface, you will see one crest is there called anterior lacrimal crest and structure attached to it is the medial palpebral ligament and some muscle attached in front of this anterior lacrimal crest here and these two muscles are orbicularis oculi and below it levator levi superioris alacui nasi. A group is there behind the crest. This group together with the group of the adjacent lacrimal bone form a fossa called lacrimal fossa which lodges the lacrimal sac. Lacrimal sac is here. So lacrimal sac it opens into the inferior mirrors of the nose by the nasolacrimal duct. So here is the position of the nasolacrimal duct. This is the group. This group is called nasolacrimal group which is converted into nasolacrimal canal. When this group is converted into a canal by its articulation with the descending process of lacrimal bone forming this canal and this canal contains the nasolacrimal duct which extends from lacrimal sac to inferior mirrors of the nose passing through the nasolacrimal canal. And on the medial side of this frontal process here you can see two crest. The upper crest is called the ethmoidal crest and its posterior part it articulates with the middle nasal concha but the anterior part is non-articular and forms the agar nasi. And here you will get one depression. This depression is called the atrium of the middle meters of the nose and below it there is another crest 
called the conchal crest here yeah. and another process of the maxilla is the palatine process this process it articulates with the same process of the opposite side forming three fourth of the hard palate here yeah, this one and this process having upper surface which is concave and lower surface and posterior border it articulates with the original process of palatine bone here is the original, original process of palatine bone and on the inferior surface you can see here the grooves for the greater palatine vessels and nerves on each side and anteriorly there is the incisive fossa and incisive canal and this is called pre maxilla i discussed all these things while i was discussing the norma basalis you can visit that video also it will be more clear to you when the two palatine process meets in the midline there is elevation or crest is there that crest is called the nasal crest and this nasal crest it is extending upwards here this is nasal crest and in front anteriorly this crest is more prominent it is called the incisor crest close to the incisor teeth and this palatine crest it articulates with the lower border of the vomer forming the important part or main part of the nasal septum here are the different sockets for the teeth of the upper jaw of which the deepest socket is the is for the canine and widest socket for the molars what is the difference between the sockets of the molars of the upper jaw and lower jaw sockets for the molars of the upper jaw they are divided into three compartments to lodge the three roots of each molar tooth but the sockets of the molars of the lower jaw divided into two compartments to accommodate two roots for each molar tooth and what type of joint is this socket of the jaw and the root of the teeth it is the gomphosis one of the types of fibrous joint and lastly i have to hold the maxilla in anatomical position now i know what is anterior what is posterior what is upper and what is lower anteriorly it is known by the nasal notch this one and also the infrabital foramen the frontal process is directed upwards opening up the maxillary hiatus or maxillary sinus looking medially and the palatine process also directed medially this is a anatomical position of maxilla of left side this is the maxilla of right side 